Hey guys, Steven Bogren here from Pro Physique. Today I'm talking about how to get shredded in 60 minutes. Say! I hope you're all having a great day. No, I am not talking about some fitness bullshit, but yes, I am absolutely talking about some fitness bullshit today. And what I wanted to talk about is something that I have coined as a term of fitness propaganda. Um, <clears throat> and it's kind of this generalized idea of what a lot of the times we get sold, what we have to go through, what we have to experience before we start recognizing the things that really work and the things that are actually going to get us to our goals and you know just the reality of what fitness and the lifestyle really entails and takes and i do think that this comes at a very uh, convenient time for most of us as i know a lot of people out there are getting to this point where they're tired of it you're you're <laughs> you started your new year's journey and you really felt like hey this is going to be my year you had a lot of emotion tied up into it um, and that's really where a lot of these things start, is that emotional connection. And whether that means we made an emotional connection with uh, an influencer or somebody we watch online, uh, we made an emotional connection with something that we felt was a story that someone had, um, or just an approach for something that we thought was really cool or that we liked doing. That emotional connection, I feel like, is where a lot of this stuff starts. <clears throat> because that is how a lot of us get kind of pulled into these directions. So it's really important to see how that emotional connection impacts us. Whether that be from, you know, feelings of our own self-worth, our body image, um, maybe just wanting to be healthier uh, and make better uh, choices with our food, our exercise, to live a longer, hopefully more independent life. Uh, but we want to really understand where these things come from. And then we want to understand what got us in. Uh, now, I think if our concerns are mainly based in health, that's definitely the best place to be. But for a lot of us, um, there are some other underlying things that can be real motivators for our exercise and our fitness. And as a prep coach, I see this a lot of times by people who are very, very like focused on the, the goal itself as opposed to the process. Um, now, that can be okay. I wouldn't be one to question why you started as much as I would be one to say, hey, absolutely, let's get started. That's fucking amazing. That's a wonderful and beautiful thing. But I would say that in terms of our long-term progress, it will be something we may need to eventually look at for what's realistic for you. And so understanding that a lot of people are playing at our feelings of inadequacy, our feelings of discomfort or unhappiness with our bodies, ourselves, our personalities, whatever it might be, they're playing at those insecurities to sell us something. And that is where we really need to be careful. They want to make money off of us. And I'll be honest, I make money off of you guys. That's how I pay to keep a roof over my head, um, food in my belly, and you know, my dog's warm. Uh, and so there becomes this kind of line of where we start bending the truth a little bit too much to where we're no longer doing you a service um, as fitness influencers, people, professionals, whatever you want to call us, and where we're doing enough to get your attention, but we're giving you quality information and education. And I think that is a big difference. A lot of people are so involved in this kind of <clears throat> entertainment mentality where I need to be entertained, I need something to keep me busy, I need something that makes me feel good or has this emotional response with it, which isn't necessarily true. And I would argue oftentimes can be very dangerous within our industry in terms of your pocketbook and for some people oftentimes your health. Uh, making sure that we understand these things and we find legitimate resources and we just utilize a lot of critical thinking. And so it's very important that we don't get caught up in something and say, oh man, that looks great. Oh man, that's wonderful. Oh person, that looks really cool. Um, sometimes those things can be okay, but if it affects our health and our well-being, we want to take the next step. And so a lot of times I think what we can do to really moderate some of this you know, tension 
and this pulling that gets created uh, by posts and by fun stories and those kind of things is to start, start asking some extra questions. It's something that they really drilled into us in my program, which was critical thinking. <clears throat> and it's not necessarily that we're not critical thinking, but you know, are we critical thinking on these things or are we making a very <clears throat> um, <laughs> fast paced, uh, immediate decision based on these things for what we want to do or what we feel works well for us. Um, we all have a lot of experience in terms of food choice, in terms of what we utilize for um, you know, our dietary intakes, what we like to eat, um, what makes us feel good, what doesn't make us feel good. Um, you know, we have experience with that. No matter who you are, no matter what your level of education, you have preferences and oftentimes we have things that we know bother us. <laughs> so we want to keep that into account when we're looking at things and we want to make sure that we're utilizing an approach that takes those things into account. Uh, very few experts that I know utilize a one-size-fits-all approach. Very few experts that I know speak in absolutes. And when I say experts, I mean people who do research. People who are setting up double-blind trials, people who are, you know, having to go out and get people to take part in this research, who are having to write it up, submit it to get approval for peer-reviewed journals, those kinds of things. And within that, there's so much that is very confusing. I've taken college statistics. I've done, <laughs> I've done research. I've taken part in running research. Um, it's very complex and it's hard to really understand, even with a, a pretty good understanding of it. It can be difficult at times. So it's really important that we find people that are maybe not necessarily just popular, that are maybe not necessarily just good looking or in shape, but people who have the education oftentimes to really let us know or to be able to traverse some of that, right? Um, I think the hard part about that is, is a lot of those people tend to be less exciting because they're telling us a lot of things that we probably already know a lot of, right? I think the hardest part about fitness in terms of what we're getting with this propaganda, this, you're gonna get fit in 10 days, you're gonna lose 20 pounds in 20 weeks. That's actually might be realistic for most people, right? But what's sexier, 10 days, 20 weeks? What's sexier, lose 20 pounds in a month? Or hey, it's gonna take us about six months to lose that if we wanna do it the right way and we wanna make sure that we're taking care of you and setting you up for success, not only with your dieting phase, but for what comes after. Ah, therein lies the challenge. Because again, they're playing at our immediate gratification. They're playing at our want to change ourselves, our, the things that we're unhappy with, you know, oh, are you, are you unhappy with your waist? Wear this corset. It will train your waist to be smaller, right? Is there any scientific evidence on that? Is there any proof that it works? Or <clears throat> are people with smaller waists, genetically speaking, just selling you a product because they're getting a cut of it? Well, these are all good questions. And oftentimes, what we see is the research follows, right? Evidence. But these are just questions to ask for yourself. <clears throat> is that supplement really going to do what it says it's going to do? Or is the big difference here that we're seeing the fact that the people who are doing said supplement are doing a lot of other activities on a regular basis or behind the scenes that are getting them those same results? That is a very good question to ask. Is this person that looks so great, did they look great already? Do they just have a lot more muscle, right? Because as we all know, some of us just tend to be maybe a little bit leaner, maybe a little bit more uh, aerodynamic, if you will. Uh, and some of us tend to be a little bit bulkier and big and strong. And so we've seen this. So is that person that's made this crazy transformation, that's posting this crazy picture, how old were they in that first picture? Were they a teenager? Okay, well, does that make as much sense to me? Is that as inspiring? And not to take away from their change, but I think for most of us as teenagers, we looked quite a bit different as we did as we got through our 20s and into our 30s. Um, and so that would be a very normal transition. Um, so is that person's transition as impressive as it would be if maybe they looked at adulthood to adulthood? These are where the questions start. 
And so my whole point of this video, my whole point of this stupid spiel is to say, ask more questions. Take a moment, pause, freeze. Think and start asking because a lot of people out there are out for your pocketbook and not necessarily your best interest. And that is a dangerous place to be when we start trusting them with things that are very important to us. So that's it. It's just a little bit of a introduction on what I like to call the fitness propaganda, the bullshit people are trying to sell you to get into your wallet. So I hope this just helps. I hope that it helps to keep you out of some trouble, to save you some toil and some headache. Remember, the year is still young. You still have plenty of time to make progress and plenty of time to really start getting those lifestyle habits in that truly make the big difference. All right, I'm done. Have a great day, y'all.